In the previous video, we covered how to assemble an oxygen tank and use the various oxygen delivery devices for patients who are still breathing adequately. In this video, we will learn the steps necessary to manage the airway in patients who are not breathing. We start with airway adjuncts, the OPA and MPA, and then move on to use a BVM. Don't hold your breath, here we go. OPAs and MPAs are airway adjuncts that help us maintain a correctly positioned tongue and open airway in unconscious patients. Let's start with the OPA. The OPA stands for oral pharyngeal airway since they are inserted into the oral pharynx of the mouth. They have two main purposes, to prevent the tongue from falling back and blocking the airway and to make it easier to suction the mouth if necessary. Use an OPA on patients who are not breathing or barely breathing or who have no gag reflex and whenever a BVM is used. What's the gag reflex? The gag reflex is a protective reaction that prevents foreign bodies from entering the airway. If activated, the patient will vomit. If you're inserting an OPA and the patient begins to vomit, then immediately remove the OPA and log roll the patient to the side to clear the airway of any vomit. Suction the airway if a suction unit is available. The right sized OPA is very important. Too big can push the tongue back, blocking the airway. Too small can be a choking hazard and thus block the airway. Here's how to measure and insert an OPA. Measure from the patient's earlobe or angle of the jaw to the corner of the mouth. Insert the OPA with the tip facing towards the roof of the mouth. Be careful not to cause damage. Rotate 180 degrees so that the curvature of the OPA aligns with the curvature of the airway. The flange should rest between the teeth. An OPA can also be inserted at a 90 degree angle from the corner of the mouth. NPA stands for nasal pharyngeal airway and is used in unresponsive patients or those who are semi-responsive but cannot adequately maintain their airway and still have a gag reflex. These are great for seizure patients, but be cautious when using an NPA on patients with significant facial and head trauma. The NPA can find its way through a skull fracture and into the brain. Like the OPA, the NPA has to be measured. Measure from the earlobe to the tip of the patient's nose. Examine the patient's nostrils for any blockages and select the bigger one for insertion. Apply lube to the end of the NPA. The bevel should face the septum. Gently insert the NPA into the nostril, following the basic curvature of the nose. The NPA should insert smoothly into the right nostril. The flange should rest against the nostril. For the left nostril, insert until resistance is met and then rotate 180 degrees into position. If breathing is inadequate or absent and the patient is unconscious, then we have to breathe for the patient. We do this with a bag valve mask or BVM. Ideally, a BVM is attached to an oxygen supply at 15 liters per minute delivering nearly 100% oxygen concentration. But it can be used in a pinch without oxygen. However, the concentration will only be that of the atmosphere, about 21%. This device can and should be used with airway adjuncts. Providing BVM assistance in the wilderness is very demanding, especially with a small team. If you are a non-medical professional, then chances are that you will never have an option of supplemental oxygen or artificial ventilation. However, it is still important to know of its life-saving importance, as it should factor in to your decision-making. The lungs have a set capacity of air they can hold. We do not normally inhale anywhere near this volume. 
The volume of air inhaled during normal inhalation is called tidal volume. It's one normal breath. On average, this is about 600 milliliters of air. This is our goal amount to deliver to our patient with each squeeze of the BVM. But wait, how much air can the BVM hold? The BVM has a volume of about 1200 to 1600 milliliters of air. That is way over the 600 milliliter per breath goal. This is why you must pay very close attention to how much air you are pushing into your patient with the BVM. By pushing in too much air, you can overinflate the lungs and cause damage, maybe even blow a hole in the lung wall. It can interfere with blood return to the heart or push past into the stomach, causing the patient to vomit. And of course, not delivering air is equally as bad as it will not oxygenate our patient, further leading into shock. So how to measure the volume of air we give with each squeeze of the BVM? The best way to do this is watch for chest rise and fall. Squeeze the BVM enough to cause gentle chest rise in your patient. This breath should be delivered gently over one second. And this brings us nicely into the rate at which we deliver these breaths. Again, too fast and too slow are both dangerous for the patient. The ideal rate is one breath every six seconds. Finally, the mask seal is another important consideration. Place the mask so that the narrow part is over the bridge of the nose, with the wider end resting on the chin. The mask should create a complete seal around the mouth and nose. Next, apply slight pressure to maintain this seal with the EC clamp technique. Create a C with your index finger and thumb over the upper part of the mask. The other three fingers, or the E, are used to grip the jawbone and maintain an open airway. Do not grip into the fleshy part of the neck. No air should escape from the seal when you squeeze the bag. Please note that this information is for adult airway management. To review, airway adjuncts and the BVM are used in patients who are unconscious and not breathing adequately. OPAs and NPAs are used to maintain an open airway. An OPA is measured from the mouth corner to the tip of the earlobe. Do not use in patients with a gag reflex. NPAs are measured from the nose to the earlobe, and these can be used in patients who are semi-conscious with a gag reflex but do not use in cases of head trauma. BVMs allow you to breathe for a patient. Create a seal with the mask over the nose and mouth with the EC clamp technique. Deliver just enough air to see gentle chest rise and fall at a rate of one breath every six seconds. Thanks for watching this base medical video. We offer the first and only 100% online recertification for Wilderness EMT, Wilderness First Responder, and Wilderness First Aid. Learn more at base-medical.com. Stay safe.